Give me a little more volume. Okay. Hey guys, welcome back again to the Cut Light and Smoke podcast presented by Zila Cigars, CigarSoapbox.com, and coming to you live from sunny Arizona in the Huddle Up Store Studios. I am Bradley, joined with my co-host, Know It All JB. JB, tell the people what is up. What's going on? Yo, what's going on? Good to see you, JB. We have a new setup here we're trying for today, and so we'll be plugging in, unplugging things, things like that, giving you different camera angles as well, and we are definitely smoking a great cigar. JB, tell them we're smoking. We're smoking the Red Sage today, bro. The Red Sage. Yeah, dude. Yeah, I love this cigar. I love that. I like, we got it in the Churchill. I think it's the only one we got left. Yeah, it is. Uh, mm-hmm. It's very, very, very perfectly balanced medium Corojo. It's the perfect balance of medium Corojo. Not too spicy, not too soft, absolutely perfectly balanced. I haven't smoked one for a while, so I'm interested to get into it. But, uh, you know, it. The Red Sage brought up an interesting topic of potential conversation, though. Yeah. And that was around magic. Magic, 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 magic. And how does magic imply in the real world, or does it? All I remember is in the office with Michael Scott coming out. He went went to magic camp, I believe. He went to magic camp as an adult. Really? It was hysterical, dude. He was talking about magic camp and everything like that, so... Uh, but yeah, I'll be interested to see, you know, to kind of riff a little bit about what your thoughts are on like magic, both now spiritually, biblically, and, you know, we'll have some conversation around it and, uh, maybe throw out some wacky theories as well. But, uh, well, yeah, we'll see what happens. I think when you talk about magic, I mean, our, our, our show is kind of centered around cigars, men and masculinity. So the cigar we're smoking obviously is the red sage and what, the reason I called a red sage was ultimately because, you know, a sage is somebody who is like wise and they're somebody that you, you listen to and you, you think to yourself, like, uh, this person is a, a place that I go to for wisdom. So that's why we call it a red sage and in the Corojo, it's got more of a red hue for it. So that's why we call it that. And, uh, it tastes very, very aged. So you think of somebody who's got a lot of age on them, they're got a lot of wisdom and things like that. So, uh, but as far as, um, magic goes, I think when we are young, uh, we are, I think the same thing that intrigues us about magic intrigues us about God. You know, it's the ability to create something out of nothing, Mm. you know, and that's what, when we, when we think about magic, that's what happens. People are creating something out of nothing. Well, that's the, we've had that conversation before and it's kind of the whole thing about like, that's the human condition is Mm -hmm. right. But as a kid, you don't really understand that yet. Right. You don't understand that you can't create especially now in a world where you're told you can do whatever you want right. to do whenever you want to do it right so yeah, yeah uh you know the human condition is the fact that you struggle with the fact that you can never be the creator right mm-hmm. so it's uh but yeah magic it, what's funny about you saying that though is is magic is most of the time some sort of sleight of hand or deception right there is nothing magical usually right. happening it's right some right. sort of well, something you missed or some sort of Right. Ruse that they're putting on you. And what what's fascinating, it's either it's it's either like a, a complete sleight of hand or or a misdirection or a deception, mm-hmm. okay, of your eyes, uh, and your cognitive abilities, or it is uh the training of a body to with with withstand something like the day the David Blaine's. Like when you think of real magic, you think of the guys like the Chris Angels, the David Blaine's the guys who are like like the mentalists, yeah, the mentalists, those guys that can make you think something or make you make you like guessing yeah. your birthday and stuff, right, right, like, right, yeah. I mean, it, it's just crazy. And then look at the camera, like you know. But again, that's thing. still deception, it though. Is. A lot of times, it is, it is. So I I think that with with that kind of we want to believe magic exists. Yeah, I think we do. Like when we see something like that, that's so. I mean, all the way back to Disney's Fantasia, bro. Oh yeah, Mickey Mouse and the Sorcerer's <laughs> Cap. Yeah, yeah. Dude, the Sword and the Stone, one of my favorite movies, mm. specifically mm. because of Merlin and being able to do all the cool stuff. Right, and right, right. And his and 100%. Stuff. Yeah, dude. 100%. Made the dishes dance and clean <laughs> themselves and the whole freaking thing. I spun that into my own little uh, caveat so my kids wouldn't get out of bed. I really? Said, I said when they get out of bed when they're, they're children, when they're children, I said if they get out of bed at night after 10 o'clock, the dishes come up and they dance around. It's really frightening. You know you what? Know? So the dishes danced around in both Beauty and the Beast. Right. In that, yeah. If your dishes are uh, clean, sometimes I'm pretty sure there were some in the Brave Little Toaster. 
Okay, the Brie Brie there were some dishes in the Brie Little Toaster. I saw the Brie Little Toaster, but you know, we'll we'll see how that how, how that thing works out in my my research of this. But so when it, when it comes to that, I think there's a difference between like the, the typical sleight of hand magic, and then there's then there's like there's real magic, like witchcraft. Yeah, there's real there's sorcery, 100. percent And that's when you're getting into the supernatural, and you're starting to play with fire at that point, which doesn't seem like fire to you because it seems powerful. Do you, you know? Do you think that that kind of like that kind of magic exists in like the in like maybe that dimension that us as humans never really get to see except for in weird experiences. Well, sure. I mean, like there's a, like it, that demon realm. There's de- maybe there's, there's a definite spiritual dimension out there. Okay. And so, I, I, in fact, I'm very happy. I mean, with all uh, the way the world's going and how it's going down, you know, to hell in a handbag. It seems like daily. Uh, the fact of the matter is. More people are waking up this idea that we're in a there's a spiritual realm out there. Yeah, I mean Joe Rogan's talking about it all the time on his podcast now. You know, and other podcasts are talking about it like crazy. But to be able to talk about it with wisdom, with candor, and with history is important because these people are just like, man, there's a spiritual war out there. I can tell. And uh, but they're not giving any kind of context by by like, well, who controls the spiritual realm? Is there control well, of- in Hollywood? Start to say. Oh, yeah. open up about the the spiritual side of things that they've experienced inside of Hollywood. Oh yeah, not to mention the political crazy stuff. Oh yeah, that's going on there. I mean that's I mean you got the whole uh, yeah, or... right. I mean the, the from from every everything from Hollywood actors being blacklisted like crazy, mm. you know, um, to for people who stand up and say you got you got to watch the Richie the Barber guy. Have you heard of this guy? Remember the clown I showed you the other day. The guy became a Christian and just started like outing everybody in Hollywood. You guys gonna watch Richie the Barber? I think you might you might have said something about it. He's tattooed all over like the face and everything like that. Why does it he sound like a Russian hitman? I know. It, it, Let it, me call Richie the Barber. Right, right. But here's the here's the crazy thing about it. Like Richie the Barber, man, he's got these incredible stories about how he was in Hollywood and he was doing some like crazy things, you know, before he became a Christian. And now he's a Christian. He prays for these people and everything. It's great. It's a crazy, crazy story, mm. you know. And he's still a barber to like the stars and stuff like that, and Hollywood elites and so on and so forth. Mm. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember that guy? I do remember you telling I, me about that. Now, yeah. So I, I do, and he talks a little bit about this on his podcast. He's got a podcast with, with one of his buddies, and I'm a huge fan of their podcast. I think they talk about some really cool stuff, and he, he does have some shock value with the ta- tattoos and everything like that. Uh, but he really is very, very right in the things that he says. He really is. He's very correct, even theologically speaking. Okay. Yeah, you know, when he talks about it, I'm like, man, because he talks about some of that magic stuff and the sorcery stuff, and he's like, that's really dangerous, man. And he's, then he talks about his experience with- Well, because that's the stuff that you even get into when you start talking about like, oh, the 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 dark elites that are drinking adrenochrome and, right. and, and doing satanic- Stuff like yeah, that, doing right. satanic well, rituals to, and stuff. Yeah, that was all conspiracy theory to like- you know, Alex Jones and everybody else are releasing videos of it actually, do, people actually doing it. So, I mean, like, those are, cra- it's kind of crazy when that stuff happens. You're like, what? How is that real? You know, but it's true. And people really believe in it because, and here's the reality. It's because there's there's a real God and a real devil. There really are. And they are at war, essentially. The great news is God ultimately wins. We know that's the end of the Bible. But the 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 bigger part of it is, while until the, until until Christ comes back ultimately in scripture yeah Satan has rule of of this world under God's authority meaning like he can't do anything without God's authority you know but there's a lot of people that are deceived really quickly into thinking they're playing with um some some light stuff just a Ouija board here and there just a little things here and there and it turns in being very very dark things that they allow into their life speaking of which did you see what they just did in Salem uh Salem uh so West Virginia? No, like Massachusetts. Oh, Salem, Massachusetts. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The witch trials where they were. Yeah. yeah. They, there's a, the world's largest Ouija board is like out there in like a park. Oh, that's healthy. Yeah, that's healthy. Yeah, that, that's. Who would do that? I don't know, dude. Who would put a Ouija board in a public park? It's it's like inviting. Well, I mean, you know who would, but. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I'm sure. But so so when it when it comes to magic, I still think that that's, you know, when when you're intrigued by magic, that that's that's the there's a verse in the in the Bible in Ecclesiastes that says that eternity is written on the soul of every man. Mm-hmm. Like it's Ecclesiastes 11. Um, and I think that that curiosity for creation, that curiosity for magic, that curiosity for that kind of stuff, that can be channeled in a very good way of like finding out who created you, yeah. finding out who you are and finding out what God created you to be. I think that's the good way. The evil way is when you're like, it becomes very self-centered and you're trying to manipulate powers that you don't know how to manipulate, 
and they end up manipulating you yeah. into believing and deceiving you into things that you think you're playing with that's really fire that you can't control that ends up burning you and setting your whole life on fire okay ultimately i know guys that that started it started started messing around with like black magic evil magic things like that that quickly went down the wormhole got super involved in like drugs and everything like that and i'm not just talking like medicinal weed or anything like that i'm talking lsd dmt things where they were tripping out cocaine everything else like that and the only time that because well, those are the only things that those are the only drugs that people claim that you can really use that get you outside of this locked brain thought process that keeps you inside of this non-spiritual realm, essentially, here, right? The, you know what I mean? Here's the cra crazy thing. We're created for this realm. Right. We're not created for that realm yet. In order to understand that realm completely, you have to be transferred to that realm. That's when you die. And that's why people yeah. freak out when they think that they see demons when they're sleeping or or they think there's a ghost in their house, right? It's yeah. just like... You, yeah, we're not meant to handle that stuff. No, and and so you see a lot of people mess around with like astral projection, where uh, people try to try to enter that realm through through the mind or something like yeah, that. Yeah, and, and that's put yourself bit, somewhere else. That's a little bit what DMT does. And and Iowa is it ayahuasca? Uh, ayahuasca. Uh, ayahuasca. Uh, and, um, I wouldn't say that's I'm as sure much as like DMT or like or like acid. Okay. Um, but you hear everybody, I mean, it, there's, there's peyote, there's the like, yeah, similar native American. It's, it's a, here's the thing about this, like microdosing it's closer to the spirits. Yeah. Yeah. Microdosing anything can actually probably be healthy for you. We know that about mushrooms and things like that. But when it comes to like macro dosing or you're just, you're just doing it to get high or what have you, you're opening yourself to a realm that can be very, very, very dangerous. And you can be influenced in ways that you can't control. And you have no idea where people have come back from that with like, demonic activity into the household, demonic activity into the life where major things happen in life. And sometimes people just blame it on the drugs. Yeah. And, and the only time that we, the time that we see in the Bible and Hebrew, the term sorcery is transliterated pharmaceutical. Meaning they were probably using the, the warning against using like abusing pharmaceutical medicine, things they understood were medicine back then. Yeah. Uh, were probably hallucinogens and things like that. Did they have, did they have people like, cause I mean, when you look back into like, uh, which is obviously like doctors and stuff. No, not necessarily doctors, but you, you have like, so like you have guys like Socrates, Aristotle, Plato, mm -hmm. even new, uh, new in, you had guys like, uh, Tesla, all these guys dabbled in some sort of chemistry. Yes. Um, which in some ways was also could be considered sorcery, right? Yeah, because of the way that they were, what they were trying to concoct or do, right? But most most scientists stick in the science and don't go into the theology behind it. Yeah, just trying so to like, could part of Zuma have been something like maybe somebody who was a chemist who was trying to create things based off of the elements that they were finding, or were they not doing that? Most yet? guys that were messing with pharmaceutical type stuff back in the Old Testament, or like which which God would call sorcery, uh, were doing it for the purpose of extricating you know, higher knowledge or something like that without going through the proper channels of God. Like trying to find the sorcerer's stone. Right, right. Which is your, which is your PP, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Uh, you like basically cook down your urine over a long period of time and there's a really specific, <laughs> somebody's going to find me for this This is one. weird. There's a really specific diet that you eat and things that you drink that change the composition of your urine. So the, the theory is that like the philosopher's stone was actually something that was created by boiling down and Chem chemistry down urine. There was a huge Reddit thread that got shut down about that. It was crazy. That's nuts, dude. That's yeah. so, I, who thought of that? Uh, that's crazy. I don't know where that where that story originally came from, but that's a fun one. Go down that rabbit Sulcer's hole. Sorcerer's stone is yeah. really your pee. Yeah, that's gross. The that's philosopher's gross. stone, not the sorcerer's stone. Oh, the philosopher's the sorcerer's stone. stone's Harry Potter now. Okay, I don't. I don't know any. I, I don't. Know. We'll see. Okay, so there's another thing, right? Here we go. So Hollywood portrays that there's this, like, in a lot of different ways, they've always portrayed that there's, like, some sort of power out there that people can access that maybe they can't, right? Look at Star Wars. Okay. You sure. have the Force. You look at Dune. Sure. It's called The Voice, which obviously I you that. can see which George, yeah, yeah. Yeah, George Lucas got that from Dune, but right, yeah. Right, right. Uh, and then you have, like, you have magic. You have Harry Potter and that magic and all that. And then you have... You know, Fantasia, you have different types of this things that are showing that like 
Bruce Almighty even, like, you know what I mean? Well, Bruce Almighty was more like, I, 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 God I, I get it, but, but still saying that like a normal person could become God. I, yeah. And I think, and have those powers. But I think w- when it comes down to it with men, with men in, in particular with, with mankind is essentially men don't like the fact that they're created in the image of God. So they tend to create God in their own image. That happens all the mm-hmm. time. Where they start going, he's a white man. Oh yeah, if you see the pictures of Jesus, <laughs> uh, yeah, he's he doesn't look like a Jew. Okay, like a Jewish carpenter from back in the day. Sweet little, sweet little white baby yeah, boy, with a beauty boy. sash and blue <laughs> makeup Black and everything hair. like that. Yeah, it's crazy, you know. So he's probably, you know, probably looks very, very, you know, uh, Jewish and like sun baked and everything else like that. He was also probably ripped because he was a carpenter, and most of the stuff they worked for in carpentry back then was sandstone. It wasn't just wooden stuff like that. It was Jesus. So Jesus was probably like, you know, bodybuilder Jesus, you know. So, um, so, so, but case in point, like, I think the, I think the reason most people like magic and like getting into that kind of stuff is because it's super intriguing for them and they don't like to. Well, it gives you a sense of control that you don't have. That's, and that's everybody in life. Yeah. Everybody feels out of control. And so they want to be in control. Some guys do it through money. Some guys do it through women. Some guys yeah. do it through drugs. And, uh, or they feel like their, their whole life is controlled. So they use like chemicals and things like that to go out of control. You know, yeah. they try, I mean, I, I, yeah, I see this all the time. We're now I know you said like the only thing that really was referenced was pharmaceutical in the Bible biblically, okay. but was there any, is, was, was there anybody else? Cause I can't really think of anybody outside of like, there's a really crazy theory about Solomon and the star of David. Um, I've never heard that theory. I, yeah. There's some, uh, that this, there's yeah. only, there's only one, there's only one really scary spooky type weird verse in the bible where it talks about ghosts okay and there's just only one and it's it's in uh it's basically where king saul so samuel was the prophet of god and king saul essentially i think this is in first second samuel first second kings i can't remember exactly where it's at in the bible but uh he goes to a witch and has her the witch who's into witchcraft and like okay scary spooky stuff has her conjure up the prophet samuel who had died I okay. Remember, okay, I do remember this. And I so, do remember and, this. and and the word typically for spirit in, in Hebrew would be pneuma. Okay, and there's some other there's a, some other words in there as well. Um, but in this this term, it's a it's a it's a unique term, and it just says ghost, and it's the actual spirit of Samuel. So the fact that the witch of in, it's not the witch of Endor, it's the witch of something. Whoever, wit the witch actually conjures up Samuel's spirit, like. And then Saul is talking to Samuel, you know, I mean, like, so it's, it's a, it's a crazy, I think it's Saul or maybe Solomon. Let's pause on that for a second. Saul, I can't remember. Yeah. So in theory, if Samuel, where, where would Samuel's spirit have been at the time I, I that it was able to be retrieved? Now we're going to get into a totally different conversation. That's, but. that's okay. That, that's a really interesting question because you know what if you remember the ghost hunters that came here they had the same question for me do you remember this i wasn't here that day oh you weren't here oh no. were you here during that t- okay so I'll, I'll talk about that in a second too so yeah the, the crazy thing is when, when when you die essentially in in hebraic theology uh there's two theories one you go to you go you go to a place called abraham's bosom which is a place of comfort kind of like heaven if you would abraham's bosom where you're comforted by god but you're not waiting for jesus to come back exactly and and absolve all sin essentially prior to christ coming that's where you go or they believe that you would just die and return to dust, okay? And at, at the great resurrection, that everyone's souls kind of- I guess it wouldn't be Jesus. It would be the so, Messiah that came back for them. Well, that, that's what they, they came back for. Yeah. Modern day Jews don't. Yeah. And that's, yeah so. Anyway, so long story short, um, that's why that's what happened. It's, it's out of context. So somehow God allowed that to happen for the sake of warning, you know, this king who wanted Samuel's blessing, but is using a wrong way to go figure it out, you know, conjuring up this spirit- uh, that was Samuel. It wasn't. It wasn't a demon. It was Samuel. You know. So, which was really, really fascinating. So, the idea is, but see, was Samuel considered? Just because I don't remember, was Samuel considered a pretty like solid, solid guy? Bad. Yes, okay. solid okay. prophet. Yeah, solid guy. Not a bad prophet, but a... I would assume he was one of the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's got a couple books in the Bible named after him. I know. <laughs> I mean, but it's it's worth asking that right, question, right? right. So, to 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 provide the context. But but in the midst of that, what ends up happening? Is that, I mean, I, I can't remember the full dialogue. I probably should have reread it before I said it. Uh, but it's in this context. So this, so these, uh, 
these Christian ghost hunters come out here one time, right? And they said, I want to talk to you about, you know, we used to be ghost hunters and stuff like that. And we've had supernatural stuff happen here all the time, which I thought was really crazy. And we've also had multiple ghost hunters in here. Right. Because, like, we've had Dave in here with, I don't know if he's brought his EMF stuff, though, but Brandon Luna has. Yeah, Brandon Luna from account, and I was not comfortable with that. I even said that. Um, not happy with that. It wasn't, wasn't very, very, I don't like that kind of stuff. Uh, but I mean, you know, I'm, I gotta, you know, he's, he's his own man anyways. Uh, but I think when you mess with that kind of stuff, you're, you're treading where angels and demons tread and you shouldn't go into those areas. You know, the life's hard enough without having to complicate it with the supernatural and be honest with you, uh, in, in a bad way. I think it complicating it with the supernatural in a good way, uh, following after Christ, following after God is good, but, uh, you know, conjuring up demons and play with Ouija boards is bad. I don't think it's very yeah. complicated, although people might debate on that. So uh, when it when it comes down to it, I think those guys who came in here were those Christian ghost hunter guys. They were finding they they said they were finding spirits that had never heard about who Jesus was, never heard who Christ was, and as a result of that, they were in, uh, sharing the gospel with like people who they thought there were people who were stuck between the worlds. And they asked me, you know, I thought about the context of them, like, well, I don't have a context. When you die, you die. You die, you're even heaven, heaven, hell. It's kind of how it goes. Well, doesn't it doesn't it kind of mention that? Those who never had the opportunity to know Jesus or kind of get a pass a little bit? Well, it, it, it doesn't say that at all. It, what it does say is that you're judged according to what you know, you know, according to knowledge that you have. Okay. You know, according, I mean, essentially you're, you, you get what you deserve. You know, if, if you, if you rejected all your life, this idea of, of Christ wanting to have a relationship with you and Christ wanted to, you know, um, and Christ pursuing you and everything else like that, well, you get what you deserve ultimately, you know? And so- that, the, the, here's the weird thing about this. When people start asking about, you know, religion and Christianity and stuff like that, especially to me, when the guys sit there and say like, you know, I don't, I don't care about Christianity. I don't care about God. I don't care about any of that kind of stuff. I'm like, oh, okay. So when you die, understand, it's understandable that you get what you, you get what you want. If you don't yeah. want God, you don't get God at the end. Mm. You don't. If you don't want him, you don't get him. You know, so God gives you ultimately what you want. And imagine what a, what a complete eternity it would be to get what you want forever and how like, selfishly indulgent that is and you think that that's heaven but it ultimately becomes boring it ultimately becomes so self-absorbing that all you have is you and nothing else you don't get a chance to explore eternity with this god that created the universe much less just the earth or you yeah you know which is kind of crazy so that's true Mm -hmm. and we're going deep today baby we we save this we save this for this time right now it's just it's it's just an interesting thing. Like, like I remember when you, you asked me off camera when I was kind of bringing this up, you're like, well, do you remember the first time you saw like a magic magic? Yeah. Right? Yeah. When's the last time? And the first time I, I saw it, I, I kind of cheated because the guy that showed me was, um, a, a police officer that was friends with my dad. Cause my dad was a police officer, but he also owned a magic shop. That was like his, his side gig as he was a cop that liked to do magic. Here's your ticket. Got it from behind your ear. I don't know. Well, pay and all, you know, kind of weird. Yeah. But, uh, so the first time I ever saw a magic trick um, was probably I was at like uh, probably some sort of school field trip at like some sort of play or something. And somebody did a magic trick on that. And it was this guy. And my dad was like, do you know that guy that came on and did the magic trick? That's officer, whatever the heck his name was. So he's like, I'm going to take you down to the shop on the weekend and we're going to go in and he's going to show you some of the magic tricks. So that's the first time I remember seeing magic. And it was like, the dude slid on fake fingers that made a red light and he yeah. turned the red light to the other finger. And yeah. there was like, uh, he showed me like one of the easiest card tricks I still do for people. And sure. it's so obvious that people just, they have no freaking clue. Every right. time I do it, it's right. great. I love it. Yeah. I'll do it one time. Uh, well, I got some magic. I got some magic. But, I've done, I've but done yeah, it. that it, it's all slide of hand. And that's exactly what I, I learned really quickly right. Right. was it, it was most of it was some sort of deception or sleight of hand. And, um, it's really interesting that magic is a deception or a sleight of hand because you had said something about, well, I mean, man is kind of bred in deception. A hundred percent. Yeah. We're, man, mankind is e- easily deceived. We, we proved that in the garden. You know, Genesis chapter three, go, go back and read it. You know, Adam and Eve are incredibly, you know, naive. And it all starts, I mean, this is the weird thing about even the dark magic you're talking about. It all starts where... We're not satisfied being created in God's image and being part of creation. We want to control more. Yeah, we we want to be the creator and master of our own destinies, master of our own lives. 
you know, if you would, versus being being absolutely happy and content under the creator, under his will, under what he wants for our lives. And so we think we can do whatever we want. And when it goes completely absentee of God, absentee of any kind of direction, we wonder, hmm, I wonder why it's not going as well as I thought it would. What do you think, what do you think people magic wise, what do you think to us as a population, as a human race is most enticing from that like realm of things like for me it would be something like being able to fly or like teleportion dude just being able to just be like well, I freaking I think, wherever I want to go I think it's go. probably split between how Hollywood preaches to us and how people believe about stuff in Hollywood yeah so you got half of it being the, the superhero stuff the other okay half, I didn't even think of yeah I didn't even everybody think wants to every, I mean superheroes are gods basically that's what they are so Superman or, they're all is it gods. paganism kind of like in Thor and all that right, right, off, right. it's all based on yeah it's, I mean all all Marvel Universe is is a remake of the Gre- Greco-Roman god system. That's all it is. Hopefully you know this already. Uh, and if I'm telling you that for the first time, blowing your mind, go read, go read a book. Uh, the the reality behind it is uh, there's that that people are attracted to because you're basically little gods, okay? Or you're attracted to the darker stuff where it's like horror. Yeah. You're like, ooh, that's kind of cool. What if I could uh, what what if I could be empowered by this dark system and be one of the guys who are you know the lion and not just the sheep. You know, if you would, versus like understanding that lying. I mean, it's 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 like a lion that can control himself and not devour all the food at once and eat over time is better than the lion that devours the whole herd of gazelle just because he's hungry. Mm. You know, so I think I think that's important for men to understand. In particular, is that uh, while you have power and while you have might and you have force to pick and choose your battles you know, according to uh, human flourishing and, and a cultural positive net, net positive, basically, that's what you want versus a cultural, a cultural net negative from your actions and, you know, all, all your glory terminating on yourself and your wants and needs. I mean, that's, that's, that's essentially where we live at today. You know, our society is most men, uh, what most men do typically, what most of us get caught up into is cultural not net negative things that we do. Like we're addicted to porn. Por- porn's, a, porn's a net negative, and we all know that. I mean, every study ever done on pornography has always been net negative. It's not a good thing. It's not, it's not a good thing at all. And you try to, w- when people say things like, I mean, yeah, the only people it's good for is the people that are making money at the top. Well, it's not even good for them. It's not good. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, I mean, I, so if you, ever watch the, if you ever watch the Whatever podcast, which is actually a really good podcast, uh, they had Adam22 on there, Ruslan KD, which is one of my favorite uh, YouTubers, actually. Ruslan was on there. Ruslan was talking about, how uh, he was on there asking and, and, and talking to Adam Twenty Two and his wife, who, who did who do like porn or OnlyFans or something like that uh, together, and they introduced the third guy in there or something like that, and then the relationship with the guy who was do bang the other guy's is wife. That, is that why the conversation around the the word cuck has been so big recently the last few months? If I understand what a cuck is, a cuck is a dude who likes watching his wife get banged by somebody yes, else. I believe so. That's the easiest way for me yeah. to put it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So. Uh, I guess in porn that would be like a, a voyeurism or something like that. Or oh, they call it cuck. Uh, they call it cuck. Okay, there it is. Yeah. yeah so, uh, yeah. I, I unfortunately know guys that are into that. That's crazy, dude. Uh, <laughs> there's, there's. Why like, isn't that infuriate? There, there's a man. There's, yeah, that's that, funny. That should infuriate you as a man. Uh, that's when you know you've been like screwed up, screwed up. Let me rephrase this. He used to be a swinger. I don't think the guy is anymore. Hopefully, because yeah. the last time I met him was actually at a church service. Uh, and I hadn't seen him for probably, I hadn't seen him for probably almost 10 years because, uh, our family stopped communicating with them okay. because, because of that. He kept asking my dad and his wife to flip what? stuff. Yeah. 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 He was a good dude. That's why it was so weird for me. And, uh, I, I still remember he was a really good friend of mine. Uh, he hooked me up with my first Sega Genesis, like really good friend of the family with my dad and stuff play came over and played chess on a weekly basis and then just started getting weird with my dad and my stepmom my dad was like i can't i i met a guy who uh and i don't know if this is this is this is church at all or anything else like that but um he was at he was at a christian university with me and what happened during that time was really really scary because uh he was talking about being a swinger and I didn't know what that was even. I didn't know. I was like, swing. I thought he was like an adult into swings. And he was swinging on like playgrounds with children. I'm like, 
that's really weird, dude. And so the more he talked about it, the weirder I felt. And I was like, why are you swinging on playgrounds and getting other couples to swing with you? That's weird, dude. And so I had no idea the sexual content of it, you know, because I'm just an innocent little boy, evidently. You know, so, uh, but, but I did, I kept myself from a lot of that stuff when I was growing up because I didn't want to get jacked up so I could, so I could enjoy a great sexual experience with my wife for a very long time. 28 years later, it's better than it ever has been, you know, but things like swinging, things like that really do damage, you know, to your uh, sexual life as a married man. That's for sure. I, you know, what's weird is the, and all these people that I know are older, they're like 60, 70, they're, they're older, they're fifties and sixties at this point in their lives. And they're all still together. Well, yeah, I mean, there's. I, I imagine if you, well, first off, I can I can see if you're if you're a swinger, then, and you both agree on it, there's got to be such a debaucherous mindset, and there's got to be a, a detachment from the relationship in a certain way that you're okay with whatever happens to your wife in the arms of another man, yeah. which most men are not. Most men don't want anyone else touching their wives, you know, which. You're not going to touch my wife without some kind of violence happening, you know? So, I mean, that's, that's just the reality. And most guys should understand that. Most guys should encourage that. But swingers, I can imagine, you know, disengage on that. I don't think there's anything magical about swingers. No. <laughs> well, I mean, it depends who you're asking. Uh, actually, I, there's another random off topic, and then I got another question for you. She's a uh, I had some friends that... Uh, they had like a big event that they were booking together. Yeah. And it was uh, two sisters and their significant others. And they were going on this trip with a friend. Mm -hmm. And the friend booked all the trip. Some single dude booked booked the whole trip. For four girls to go with him? No, 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 no. There was for two girls, their husbands, and then he had a couple friends of his that were going as well. Okay. And then last minute, he bails. And I'm still wondering if it was a sick joke. Because everybody gets to this resort down in Mexico. And Is it all paid for? Oh, yeah. Oh. It was all paid for. So they get to this resort, and uh, the dude doesn't show up, and uh, they find out it's a swingers resort. And the way they found out was one of the guys, his name's Willie. He's a really good-looking African-American dude. He's built, got a real, he got a nice, he got a nice, he got that, you know. What are you trying to say, bro? He got nice, nice firm buttocks on him. And uh, there's a reason I'm saying that. So there was a bunch of old white ladies that kept walking up to him and, like, would touch him. And, like, one lady grabbed his ass, had a whole handful, and was like, hey, honey, how you doing? And finally he was like, all right, what's going on? It's old cougars. Huh? And they looked into it, and they found out that they were at this swingers resort. That's messed up, dude. That's a funny joke. That's a funny joke. Don't get me wrong. Dude, the book that wasn't even there. That's a funny joke, but it's a little savage as a joke, I'll tell you that much. I, I will say that I have a my best friend from high school. Uh, Dan, Dan Plug, my best man at my wedding. Dan, if you watch this, love you, bro. Um, set me up with something like that. A, a other friend of ours named Steve, when we were in high school. Uh, we were about 17, 18. And this new movie came out called The Crying Game. And he's like, he's like, hey, did you guys see this? And it got all kinds of awards and everything else like that. Uh, speaking of, speaking of trannies. Um, so we, we go in there, we're sitting there and the whole time you're watching the game, you're watching the movie. It's this guy who, who's pretending to be a girl the whole time. You don't get it to the end of the movie. Okay. Okay. And this other guy, you know, has sex with her and everything else like that. And at the end finds out she's transvestite. And my, I mean, I'm, I mean, in the middle of the movie, I freak out. I'm like, oh my gosh, what? And then my buddy Dan's coming down the aisle with a big bag of popcorn. He goes, hey guys, are you enjoying the movie? And I look around and it just, I mean, as far as the eye can see, dude, it was just not people and, you know, who got done with football practice and, you know, get ready to get in their Mustang and go home. So, so let me ask you another question, right? Because, like, you were talking about how that witch was able to bring Samuel back, right? How do you think that she was able to do that, number one? Um, and number two, do you think that there are people out here that are today that, that have been given any similar today, abilities to today, that? I can actually do that? Yeah. Uh, no. I don't believe that can be done today. Uh, I believe that what, what people are talking to are actually demonic entities that are there to deceive you. The thinking it can be done today because if if people, when they die, they essentially just go into the nether world and they roam this land, that, that's that's a much much more palpable thing to believe than heaven and hell. You know what I'm saying? Or everyone, all good people go to heaven or yeah, something like, like that. Yeah, purgatory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's much more palpable to believe that. So I think that's what that's what people believe. But in all honesty, I think they're talking to demons. Yeah, that's what I think is has actually happened a lot of times. But I think I think I think 
you know, uh, what do you call those? Not sorcerers. What do you call them? Um, uh, palm readers, all that kind of stuff. Uh, fortune tellers. Yeah, I think they they do that when they have seances and they talk to the dead. I think they're talking to demons that are pretending to be your dead grandma, your dead grandpa, so on and so forth. Yeah, that's I I really believe that fully. You know, I know that some people think I'm just nuts for believing that, but here's the here's the reality behind it. What's more nuts to believe in a, a, a vetted old scripture that's been the best selling book for all eternity and for all forever that's been vetted and been trying to be proven time and time again, yet it never has been, never will be, you know? So what's more, I mean, then someone's trying to take your money to tell you that grandpa said he still loves you. I mean, what's more, what's, what's more like, what, what's more re- realistic, you know? Well, and how do you think, how do you think that witch was able to conjure Samuel's spirit back? I think that's a, that's a one-off type thing. Like God allowed it for the sake of Samuel being in particular. Yeah, of Sam, uh, uh, for for Saul being rebuked. Yeah, by sick because when Samuel woke up, it wasn't all peaches and cream in that conversation, if I remember correctly. Yeah, it was like, "Why are you here? Why'd you wake me up from my slumber?" He said he was sleeping. Oh, that's right. I yeah, remember that. Yeah, I said he was sleeping. Yeah. So now, now slumber also means dead. So when it talks about sleeping and and death and sleep, like the eternal slumber. Yeah, it talks about that continually in Scripture. So a lot of times when they say. Uh, you, you're asleep and you need to wake up. It means like you're dead spiritually. You need to wake wake up spiritually speaking. Like wake up, you know, to the reality of who God is. Things like that. That's always constantly said throughout Scripture, both in Old and New Testaments, and it's also both in Hebrew, Greek, and Aramaic that are all in Scriptures. You know, so but I think that that's a big, a big issue. You know, quite frankly. Well, guys, we don't know what you think about stuff, but if you do have questions about anything that we talked about today, drop a comment below. We're not going to share the email anymore because we're going to have video here and it's going to be on. Uh, the Zeal Cigar Review channel. So the Cut, Light, and Smoke podcast is where you get a little deeper with the cigars and with conversations that we have outside the Zeal Cigar Review. Drop a comment below. How did you, you like it? How did you like the videos? How would you like everything else? Please drop a comment because we'd love to hear what your thoughts are on the things that we said. So for the Zeal... <laughs> for the Cut, Light, and Smoke podcast, I've been Bradley. It's been JB. And you know what? We're out of here like what? I see. Peace.